This tube that I sew to one side is made of a fabric that can scrunch up and gather up. If you use a fabric that's too stiff for that, then it won't fit as nicely to your face. You've probably noticed that uh, a lot of these, the medical masks have folds in them to make them form fit around the face. Before we fold the fabric, we need to adhere the stick and tear stabilizer to the wrong side of the fabric that we've chosen for the outside or the fabric that people will see, not the lining fabric. Stick and tear has a release liner that you remove. Peel that back. It's a lot easier to cut your fabric with the stick and tear being a little bit bigger. Just like when you make a quilt and you have your batting stick out longer. So you can see the similarity in the fiber of our stick and tear versus this mask. This is a lot softer. We have our lining fabric and the top material. And what you want to do is you want to crease both of them separately. So how I prepared this was I fold my fabric right side together in half to find the center of my actual fa mask fabric. If you measured your mask and it goes all the way to your ear, you won't have anywhere to add that fabric that I mentioned before that's going to scrunch up and make it more form-fitting to your face. Now on the lining fabric, we're going to go ahead and do the same steps. We want our fabric, this piece that's going to be stitched in, to actually be allow for a seam allowance to go on either side. And this way we have no exposed seams on this mask when we're finished. And then fold the fabric over. And we have our outer fabric with the stick and tear stabilizer attached to it. The lining fabric all pleated up and ready to go. And our two tubes for feeding the elastic through. Now before we construct all of these, we're going to insert elastic in to help it form to your face. So that's what you see on this area here and where you don't see the elastic at all is because I inserted it into the actual mask, sewed it, and then I encased it afterward. The length of elastic that I chose for mine was a four inch spans. That does not mean that the elastic itself is four inches. So if you have a four inch distance that you're going to stretch, you're gonna stretch your elastic to that four inch distance and then it will gather up and cause the fabric to, to bunch together, which causes it to drop beneath your chin and hug on to your face. Now I'm taking the tube and I'm going to position it on to the fabric so that it is inside a, a quarter of an inch. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to sew this into the seam. Now I'm going to take it, I'm going to put right sides together so that it looks the same on top and bottom. So you can see that the folds are facing up. That means that I want this fabric, the folds to also go up. So I have the seam allowance allowed for. If you had this all the way to the edge, you would close up your tube and you wouldn't have a tube to feed the elastic through if you did that. So the next step is to sew from one end to the other on a quarter inch. It's much easier to have the folds facing towards you rather than having the folds go this way and have the foot have to contend with them. So have it go this way. It's not that important that you achieve a quarter inch for this. I'm gonna go ahead and start in from the edge and sew a couple stitches forward, then go reverse and then come back again. I'm using a 9014 universal needle for the construction of this. 
And we're going to go ahead and repeat that on the other side. If you have difficulty getting the foot to go over all that thickness, increasing your stitch length will increase the pull of the feed dogs for every stitch and make it easier for you to go over these thicknesses. Now we're gonna sew on these two sides, but we need to leave an area to turn this right side out when we're finished. And we also have another concern, that tube that we have inserted inside of there, we need to make sure that that tube cannot actually get stitched into the seam or you will not have any way to feed your elastic through. Like this. And then take a pin and just pin it so that it doesn't slip on you. This is the chin side. So we can go all the way down now, making sure you keep your edges together. As you approach, you want to feel and make sure you're not going to stitch the tube closed on this side either. Okay, then we're going to remove the pins. Now I'm going to remove the satin edge foot and put on my sequins and ribbon foot. Sequins and ribbon foot is a unique patented foot, the unique bottom that locks your elastic into your feed dogs. The proper settings for sewing the elastic is going to be the multiple zigzag or three-step zigzag. It has a stitch that goes stitch, 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 or zig, 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 zag, 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 also known as the serpentine stitch on the Bernina. Uh, you can use this one as well as a regular zigzag stitch if you don't have one of those. And then I'm going to use a 5 millimeter wide width and I'm going to lengthen the stitch length all the way to the longest stitch length my machine will do. In addition to that, on this machine, this is where I access my pressure foot pressure and I have it at the normal setting. So if you have released your pressure to do applique or other fun projects, make sure that you check your pressure setting. You also may have a silver disc on the top that you push and release. Refer to your instruction manual on your sewing machine to learn how to apply a normal standard pressure on the presser foot. I've also selected polyester thread to be used in the needle and the bobbin. Now I'd marked my chin and I wrote chin on this side and nose on that side to help me remember as I sew because it can get confusing. And while the chin is a four inch space, I have a three inch section of elastic already marked. So as I sew, I'm gonna line up one mark and then I'm gonna stretch the elastic all the way to the far end. And that is how you end up with equal gathers between the two marks. This guide is equipped with a quarter inch opening, but we do offer additional guides for this foot to sew narrower elastics and wider elastics. However, you can use this foot even if you want to sew one inch wide elastic as we don't need the guide to actually sew the elastic. However, having a guide does make it nice in this case because we're using narrower elastic. So we just insert it right into the tube and we're going to want to see that line that we marked for the beginning of the elastic and line it up with the line on the fabric. I put the elastic in the foot before I attach it to the machine just because it's easier. I'm going to pull the folds away just to make sure I don't stitch it under the elastic and there's folds on both sides so I've pulled away the back and the top of the folds that will be expanding when we put the mask on our face so I know that I am not stitching them and preventing that from happening when we put the mask on. Before you start pulling, we want to sew some stitches in place. You can put your stitch length on zero for the first few stitches or lower your feed dog so that you can stitch in place to really secure the end of that elastic. And now we're going to go ahead and raise the feed dogs back up again and the feed dogs will resume pulling the fabric through and I have it set for five millimeter stitch length. So it's going to pull through really far. Every time the stitch sews a stitch, it's going to pull five millimeters to the next stitch. And this 
in essence, makes your machine stronger so that you can pull towards you. And you don't have to pull behind the foot on the elastic like you do with other feet made by other companies. Now I just take the elastic and pull until it lines up with that second mark. And the machine will do the rest of the hard work for you. Not looking at the needle, but watching that line and just keep lining it up there. Then you're going to go ahead and lower your feed dogs or shorten your stitch length and secure the other end, just as you did before. And you can see how the fabric is bunching up. I'll go ahead and cut the elastic. So it has just a little bit of a gather. We're going to turn this now right side out before sewing the nose elastic in place. I'm just reaching in and feeling for the tube that I stitched in as it's a perfect little handle for pulling the right side out. And then just pull it right side out. And you can see that it's not very straight. Press this so that the edges line up with each other like that. And notice that the foot tips. And that is why I have this always ready as I work with thicker materials to just set it there and it will level off the presser foot. Just go ahead and secure the beginning of your stitch as well. Keep your eye right there or simply try to not have your stitches change as you go along the edge. And what I'm doing is pulling the fabric flat, trying not to pull it too hard because you want the feed dogs to still feed the fabric through. Now you can see how much nicer that looks. It still has the tuck that is created by sewing the elastic on that will position this better beneath my chin. Now I'm going to go ahead and sew the nose. And I can't see the marks because they're inside the seam. So you just want to fold your fabric again in half to find the center point. And then mark that center point. And we're going to go ahead and go one inch out from there and mark and one inch out from there and mark. And this is where we place our second piece of elastic and we're gonna do so stitching it flat on the outside of the inside lining of our mask. And now your mask forms this cone shape appearance. And forms to your face. Next step is to put the elastic loops through you can just take a safety pin and pin right through the end of your elastic. Go through that tube, or if you have any other type of feeding technique that you like to use, and just go through. Comes out the other end. This is where you're going to go ahead and remove the safety pin and tie a knot. After making one for myself before, I know that a seven inch piece of elastic is adequate for me to tie a knot and then still be able to go over my ears without feeling as though my ears are getting pulled down. So we'll just go ahead and tie a knot. And then you just pull and the knot will go inside of the tube, leaving you with this little loop. And I recommend you don't stitch the elastic to the tube should the elastic start to weaken and you need to replace it. And also because it may pull hard on your ear and make you want to fiddle with it more. And there you have it. A mask that easily goes on. And hugs the cheeks, the chin, 
is very sturdy and very comfortable. And when you get makeup on it, well, you can throw it in the wash and use it the next time. I hope that you found this video beneficial. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button, share it with your friends. And if you've yet to subscribe to my channel, well, I sure hope you'll do so today. Remember, these are difficult times for many. Be kind to one another and be well. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.